All right, folks. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you might be. Welcome to Code of Life. Welcome back. Uh, I'm your host, Sam Basu, and uh, it is Friday, right? It, it better be Friday. <laughs> it feels like Friday. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Trouble. It's been a long week. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is the chat show, and our one mm -hmm. rule is we don't share screen. We we don't uh, code because we do that all through the week. Mm -hmm. This is our one day of the week where we stretch our legs and talk to people that we love to hang out with. Um, you know, we have not been doing as much of that uh, with the pandemic, but you know, my friend here, I have actually hung out with you, but yes, <laughs> officially welcome here, sir. Javier Lozano, how are you? I'm doing great, Sam. Thank you so much for having me. And, and you're right, it's kind of, it's been a crazy couple of weeks in a good way, right? You know, that, you know, that's all it is. And Friday is usually, fun enough, my decompression day. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. when you said, I was like, hey, I would love to have you show. I was like, yes, let's do it. It's awesome. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. So, you know, um, we have been missing out um, just, you know, purely hanging out with folks, like the, the hallway track, like we call it at conferences, right. like sitting down with somebody uh, with a coffee or a drink and just like learning more about uh, how they work and, and what they do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am I mean, I've known you a few years, but I want to know more about you. So uh, let's start with an existential question. Like, who are you? Have you figured that out yet? I haven't yet. <laughs> uh, my kids have an impression of who I am, and that is an Uber driver. Oh. Uh, <laughs> because you of like everything flip them around all over the town <laughs> yeah pretty much that's you know that's that's been my that's my life after i joke because like i have a nine to five or an eight to five and then i have a five to nine mm -hmm. which essentially just being an extra you know uh just herder of, ch of children from yeah. practices to other practices and so on so and then how many kids do you have i have uh three three boys wow. Wow. And they're all uh, have a 15 year old, a 12 year old, and a 10 year old, and they're all in sports. Wow. Uh, luckily, my 12 year old was doing uh, football. That's like American yes. football, not mm -hmm. you know football soccer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, just want to, I want to clarify that across because I know it means different things to different people. Um, and so he finished the season earlier on. So, but he has, still has band practice. He's in a rock band. Um, nice along with my 10 year old. So it's kind of nice because like we drop him off at rehearsal and then my wife and I look at each other. It's like, we have like three hours. What do we do? <laughs> we clean. <laughs> uh, the thing that you go back to. Get Pretty to much. Clean. Yeah. Or you sleep. Yeah, or you sleep. And, and sadly enough, I don't do enough of that. And I've been um, changing my life habits a bit. Not telling that I had bad life habits. It's just, uh, I think I'm in the, hmm, I think it's the, seventh week um where i've been getting um so even the pandemic so funny so let me rewind here a little bit uh, and, and i'm not sure if other if some of your viewers do this or not uh, and i'm sure they probably do it better than i do but uh back in march of last year i started um i was like you know what march 1st i'm gonna commit i need to lose some weight blah 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 i need to get in better shape so i did that march 1st 2020 March 15th of 2020, everything shut down because of the, pan <laughs> because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but um, I started doing CrossFit. Um, not necessarily that, you know, whatever. It's just, I like that kind of exercise. I like to be able to do, in a, you know, a lot of hit, a lot of different things. Uh, so I started doing it, you know, I, we had a, like a month hiatus. We were doing it through Zoom and it's a lot harder mm -hmm. to do through Zoom, you know, and it wasn't anything like you need weights or anything. It was more like, hey, let's do squats and let's do all these different, you know, whatever. Um, I was doing great. Um, we came back, you know, uh, once restrictions let up, I was able to go back, do some workout. I was able to do these things. And um, family got sick um, on other things. So last year, so last year was kind of up and down. January of this year, I was like, yep, I'm going to commit. This is going to be great. I was awesome for six months. And then good stretch. vacation happened. So uh, that was like, that, so the, the week where you and I were together in Orlando for uh, Dev Intersection, that was my first week not working out. Hmm. And then it continued for like the next 10, <laughs> 12 weeks. <laughs> yeah. so, so then I picked it up uh, and then I'm back at it again. But, you know, I get up at 4 a.m. I work uh, uh, classes at 5. So I'm in bed by 9.30. So it's like mm -hmm. shifting essentially your lifestyle and, and everything else, but. Oh, good for you. But it's fun. So yeah. what I heard is you 
try to work as little as you can and just try to slap people around and try to be healthy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yep. Uh, well, uh, so it's funny enough because like even when I'm dropping off my kits off to whatever practice it is, I still take my iPad. I used to take my laptop with, but I'm like just bulking whatever else. So I take my iPad and that's when I actually do emails, right? Because I'm just sitting there like 30 minutes uh, before or 20 minutes before picking up a kit from practice. I'm just like, oh, let me knock out these emails, right? So I've been doing a lot of the the .NET conf behind the scenes things on my iPad <laughs> from my car. Nice. Nice. I do want to get into that in content. Yeah, no but, worries. But, it's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit more um, uh, about you. Like, where do you live? Like, sure. Do you, do you like where you are? Do you not like some things? Oh, no. I mean, uh, where? so it's funny. Um, so I was, I was born and raised in Mexico. So let me start in the beginning and I'll shorten it up. I was born and raised in Mexico. My family um, where? Immig um, in the city of Monterey, Mexico. So I was just there in August visiting my dad. We, the house that I grew up is still there. I mean, it's like my 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 dad lives there for part of the time, and he lives in the United States. So he's kind of like a snowbird, right? Because he's retired for several years now. So um, and um, so anyway, so we we immigrated to the United States in the '91, and kind of grew up here and everything else. Uh, we moved to the state of Iowa. Mm -hmm. So um, Iowa is. One of it's a, a very it's it's a farming state. So I mean, you drive down the interstate and you see cornfields, and mm -hmm. when you don't see a cornfield, you see a soybean field, mm -hmm. and when you don't see a cornfield or a soybean field, you see a town, yeah. <laughs> right? So it's kind of all over the place. I love it. It is um is gorgeous out. Um, the winter sucks, but you know, welcome to living in the north part of the U.S. I guess you know there's snow there's lots of wind and never and, and like that in the winter but i love the people i love the atmosphere um and that's sort of where i live i live in the, in the, the capital of the state uh, called des moines des moines mm -hmm. uh, it spells des moines but it's mm -hmm. french so it's des moines yeah. um so um but yeah it, it's great uh, i own a consulting business here and i have been doing that for several years and um th the nice thing about it now i'm glad that finally everybody caught up is that we can be remote we can work anywhere, <laughs> right. especially in our field, right? And I'll, yeah. I'll be very specific of that in our field. And I just need an internet connection. I mean, I got gigabit internet coming into my house. <laughs> yeah. I get gigabit yeah. up and gigabit down. So it's like downloading a virtual machine, uploading code, doing streaming. It's it's not a blip at all. Uh, and also I can, you know, like you were talking before that we got on the show is like, going to uh, Redmond, so some of the stuff I do with Microsoft or doing, going down to a conference. Okay, cool, well, that's, it stinks that it's not a direct flight, but it's two flights, <laughs> right? So I gotta go to a major airport to make it yet only a one single flight, but not a big deal. Yeah, I don't know if I ever told you, uh, I went to school in uh, Fargo, North Dakota. So oh, you all, did? Yeah, I, th I, th I think you, I, I think you it's, did, it's very, very uh, um, yeah. uh, NDSU, right? Yes, oh, yes, yes, yep. I remember, yeah. So, yep. yeah, I've driven, driven through the Dakotas and through Iowa, uh, Illinois a lot. So, yeah, and uh, like you said, like, it, it, is a, it is a luxury that we have that, I mean, our industry operates so well. I will say, like, th there's been a lot of discussion about the future of work, and yeah, it's, right. it's different for everybody. A lot of, like, engineering and, and marketing orgs actually want to be together, while right. some uh, job roles, even within our industry, are just, like, so much more right. suitable to remote work. So, right. yeah. We are, we are a little privileged. So you did mention you have um, a consulting firm. What right. all do you do? What technologies do you deal with? Uh, believe it or not, I mostly do Microsoft and .NET stuff. Um, and, and the reason why that is, is that you know many, many years ago, I was, uh, I was doing a lot of Java and .NET, and this is like before .NET 2.0. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of those, I was in, 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 in a, some of the people that you and I both know were in, in a similar cross path, right? So if you wanted to do web technologies back in the late nineties, uh, you could do, um, you can do CGI, which was fun. I mean, I, I've written, I wrote a lot of C++ code that did CGI and mm -hmm. let me tell you, not again. Uh, <laughs> and, I was going to say, like, well, way to age yourself and me together. <laughs> well, you're welcome, <laughs> I, uh, I guess. So, you know, you could do CGI, you can do ASP, ASP 3.0 with, you know, JScript or VBScript. And um, and you can do this whole thing called um, servlets or, mm -hmm. um, he heaven forbid, um, 
applets, <laughs> right, that you can download on your browser and things like that. So I was doing a lot of Java just because I liked the um, uh, OO aspect of it. And then um, when I was in college, you know, there were a lot of um, bits that I was able to see for uh, .NET. Funny enough, actually, I was uh, – VV, VV6 is my jam. I mean, that's how I did a lot of stuff programming in high school, even in college, and then moved to see C++ and those things. And then when I saw, literally, I was excited about .NET for VV.NET because I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. I know this thing. It's going to be, look, this is awesome. It's OO now. I know these things. And then I started, um, you know, when then I learned about a, a cool, quote unquote, new language called codename Cool, <laughs> uh, which essentially became C Sharp. Right. Um, so then I learned C sharp because I knew Java and C and everything else. And and that's where I was like, I got as a professional, my literally first year out of college, I'm like, dot net is one oh. And then we then soon after we got one one. <laughs> um, and then I'm doing Java. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? You know, it's I got these two things. And I was a member of an architect team in a company here in Des Moines. Um, so I was doing all the op uh, all the operations for websites. I knew you know web requests, doing all these different things, and um, I think the tipping point for me was when I came up to my manager and I told my manager, "Is like, hey, I'm the only non senior person on this team. Literally, I'm months out of college, and I'm on this team with people who have been out of college for 15 plus years." Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, you know, whenever it is, whatever it is an issue, I get to, I have the privilege <laughs> for being the new guy to solve it. And it's like, hey, when can I become a senior? And then that's where the fun conversation happens. It's like, well, you got to be here for a while, blah, 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 and everything else. And I'm like, but I'm doing all the work. It's like, no, that doesn't work that way. Okay, cool, great. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go down this way and start focusing on .NET because I'm like, if I have to sort of sit and wait until things happen on this side, I rather go uh, where the pasture is new and green and try to trailblaze on that. Yeah. And here we are. Oh gosh, uh, yeah, uh, a year, many years later. I'm just going to say it that yeah. way. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that, so that's why I started down that path. And um, so I do a lot of ASP.NET. Obviously, that's what my my bread and butter. Um, Azure. Uh, and a um, little bit of AWS just because I have a couple clients that are like, hey, do you know how to do this? Like, I don't, but like, just, you know, potato, potato, let's figure, <laughs> let's figure it out. Um, so, and it's mostly not necessarily of, I've done solution delivery. Someone hires me to build the entire thing for them and then work with their team and doing it. Uh, but honestly, the thing that I love the most is actually pairing with the team and just working with them and I get to deliver code. It's not more like, well, if it were me, I were to do this and that. It's like, nope, I'm in there writing code with them. I'm deploying code. I'm I'm just you're, you're another, in weeds. I'm in the weeds, right? Um, but at the same time, I can step away and talk right. to C-level people right? and make it really about, because at that point, you know, C-level people care about the business. What is the business impact? How much is mm -hmm. gonna cost me? What is the value I would get out of this? They don't care about like, you know, if you do this, you get three milliseconds faster on this front time, but they don't care. They just care about, is this gonna provide value to our customers and our clients and whatever else? Down in the weeds, yeah, we do care about, it's like, you know, you should not do an upsert or you should do whatever. And so it's, um, I always joke that, and, and it's a thing that um, I don't remember where I heard it from, but I, I love it, is that, you know, you sometimes, and I refer to it as being an architect, right? As an architect, you gotta be a mile wide and an inch deep. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, keep, you have to be an inch wide and a mile deep. <laughs> Right. Because yeah. you have to know where those intersections are at. You don't have to be an expert in everything. You can just like now, like doctors, you can specialize in something. You can specialize in identity and mobile and microservices, whatever that means, right? And, and all those things. Um, but at the same time, you kind of have to know a little bit about everything and know where to research and know yeah. where your limits are at. Yeah. And then some of it, like, it comes with experience. Like, you have yeah. to put in a few years and, and oh, gosh, yeah. things. And then this is the age old debate that we have had in our industry where like generalist versus specialist and, and our industry tends to reward specialists more. But right. as you grow in your career, you tend to understand more how systems work together and you, and you start being more of a generalist. Right. Yeah. And, and it's and it's funny because it's it's a really tough decision for many people to figure out. It's like, do I want to continue being a generalist or do I want to 
focus on something, right? So if I have many quote unquote, I'll use hobbies or like passions or different ones. The one that I always um, tend to go towards is identity, right? Because of it's it's a hard problem to solve. And I'm not saying that I've solved it elegantly, but I know what a solution that works looks like right. and what is like, quote unquote, the promised land, right? right. Um, it takes a lot of work to get there um, because essentially, and depending on how you do it, you could be cobbling things together, you could be doing everything else, but you have to sort of understand the protocols and kind of how they work and everything else. And I think right now where we're at, um, you know, we talk about infrastructure as code, uh, you know, uh, um, um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. Uh, we're literally in the in the beginning of identity as a service, right? So mm -hmm. out, outsourcing all of that to third parties to like, it's too complicated. I don't I don't want to deal with it. And honestly, it is complicated because you need like a full team or team and a half to be able to maintain that. Right. Uh, and I'm talking beyond username and password, <laughs> not just you know mm -hmm. those those sort of things. Right. Uh, I know we were going to talk technically, but I was just kind of you know yeah, I was just kind of bringing up. It's like you know it's one of those things as you. Uh, for me, it was like, I wasn't like, oh, I would love to do identity, right? I sort of like slipped, like fell into it because I needed mm -hmm. to deliver something for right, right. Uh, a place I used to work with before I went independent. Yeah. And it was like, oh, this is fun, right? So that's why that's I call it as a hobby. It's like, I'm still trying to keep up with, because it's always changing. So it's not like, mm -hmm. if I were there, I will probably be a thousand times better than I am now. Um, I mean, I feel very confident in my skills and kind of being like, man, it doesn't work that way. Let's do it this way. Um, but it's not like I'm not, I'm not an, at the truly, truly like level 70 expert, right? I'm probably in the mid fifties <laughs> because from that point on, you gotta fig you gotta literally focus and double down into it. So, right. right. Yeah. No, well said. Now you talked about some of the things that you deal with now, but let me go back a little bit more. Like, is this Ooh. what you always wanted to do? Like, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Funny right. enough. Well, actually, so I lied a little bit. Sorry. I always, I wanted to be a mathematician <laughs> but that was the, because I loved math, right? And I loved math because I was like inputs, outputs, process, solution. And then, uh, and this was also, you know, 10 year old Javier. So obviously I was, I knew everything as a, as a 10 year old. Uh, and I just, you know, I loved math. And then I realized, and then I was like, oh, no, I really love problem solving. Right. So I wanted to be an engineer. And there was nothing, you know, when I was looking at, I went to an engineering school. You're talking about, you know, you're going to North Dakota. I went to literally just up the interstate um, from my house that way um, uh, um, uh, to Iowa State University. That's a great school. Uh, yep. And um, for it's College of en Engineering, it is like, one of the top ones in at least the Midwest. And um, I went and, grad and got a, a comp sci degree. And the thing about it, I tell people about it, the comp sci degree is like, I was taught how to solve problems. I was not taught how to write computer code, mm -hmm. right? I have a lot of appreciation for a lexer <laughs> in a compiler because I had to write mathematical proof that say a lexer is possible, <laughs> right? So it's kind of one of those things that I know the foundations of it, learning it, a lecture varies depending on who writes it and which thing, you know, where and research that comes into it. And hey, there's a new programming language. So there's a new thing in that. Great, cool. I have the passion for learning. So that fuels me learning other things. Unfortunately, sometimes I don't, you know, back to the whole .NET thing is because of I'm busy delivering stuff. Right. So, yeah, I grant uh, Dinette is my my tool to go because I know how to I, I always refer to, you know, my, my kids just getting into golfing is and I'm mm -hmm. going out there and really not swinging a club as much because I'm there just helping them develop their skills. And I'm like, I was referred to it's like it's like grabbing that golf club that, you know, you can nail 200 yards, 150 yards. Right. And it's you're sticking it right on the green and you're like two putts away or a putt away. That's the way I view. I, I see myself using dot net or the technologies that I know. Right. It's just, yeah, sure. I can get it done. Can I use another tool to accomplish the job? Yeah. I mean, I learned that in college. Right. If you can do it in one language or one tool, you can do it in any of them. It may not be the same steps. But the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, well but yeah. Well yeah. So like you do all of this solution delivery, but right. you are also known uh, to be very involved with the developer community. Right. Mm -hmm. Where did that start? Oh, man, I would say um, college. 
and, and the reason why I say that, remember I was saying I was VV down at the VV6 developer and VV.net. Uh, I'm sitting there in um, my C++ class, my first year in, in college, and I'm like, I just pointers, what, what's that? You know, just like all learning all these different things. And um, uh, a friend of, of mine for the, he later on transferred to a different school um, just to be closer to family. He uh, kind of took me under his wing and was like, here's, you know, here's the books that I recommend. Just go play around with the compiler and everything else. And just trying to just shepherd me into kind of like in the, in the, in the different pieces of it. And from that point on, it was like, I have to pay it forward. Right. Someone took the time to help me. I'm yeah. going to take my time to help somebody else. So from that point, it was like, oh, okay, well, you need help with this. Cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll partner up. And, and everybody I worked with was like, yeah, they see that I'm sitting there, like me walking with a cup of coffee. It's like, we got this problem. Sure. Let's figure it out. I get up, like talk at the keyboard. Let's do this. Go to the whiteboard. And I love that. Right. So the difference between that and like the larger dynamic community is literally just more people. But it's not any different, right? It's just, you know, you it's not any different from talking to two people to talking to 200 people. And, um, the, the, you know, I know a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome. And it's like, there's really no imposter syndrome, right? Because I'm not saying I am the expert at this. All of you are not experts. Look at me. And it's like, no, I'm saying it's like, well, let's figure it out. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, yeah. and whether it's like in a small group or larger group, that's really all that matters. No, so that is, that is very well said. Like, uh, as long as you're not speaking from a pedestal, like, no. I'm just here to share my experience and my, and yep. my struggles. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, uh, yeah, go on. No, I was going to say, you know, and you, you hit that, you know, and, and that's why, you know, funny enough, because I was talking about being a mathematician and everything else. And it's like, then I realized what I really like is being a teacher, <laughs> right? Being a teacher, but a more from a coach up perspective, but not more like here's your assignments or anything else, right? And and I realized that that comes into like servant leadership and everything. So like even when I have managed teams, um, I always try to remember, okay, where places did you work and did you have a horrible experience because of the culture? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't be that person, right? right. Work really hard on making that experience so the person who really just wants to geek out on code can geek out on code. And my line for several years was like Excel and Outlook, little word, right? And I would code on the side and I would code on the side because um, I was having my business. So I was doing part-time code and everything else. So me coming in on Monday morning, oh, I can't wait to code. It's like, no, I did that on, on the weekend and at night. My kids were younger, so I could do it because they would go to bed early, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah, but it, all those things kind of helped me sort of develop those different skills. Yeah. And, and it's so on point when you said like you, you love to teach and I, and I see a lot of people do that. I, right. I, I want to grow into that. I actually see a lot of folks who have been out in the industry for quite some time and they actually go back to their local schools and universities right. and they put in their time like an adjunct professor or something because a lot of the times right. like the tenure tracks like um, the adjunct folks are bringing in industry experience and you're right. really literally sharing what you are doing yep. at work. Uh, that, that is so nice to yeah. kind of uh, help inspire. I looked into it. There's somebody here in Des Moines. Um, he actually is, I think, a if not the maintainer or a big maintainer of .NET Nuke. His name is Mitchell Sellers. Um, great guy. Yeah, I know. Hey, I know Mitchell. Mitchell. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, so he did that. He did that here in a community college. He actually nice. taught a C sharp class and everything else. So I've known I've known Mitchell for years. Um, and he was like, "Hey, you should look into it." And I did. I went through and I had the audition as that, mm -hmm. but I never pulled the trigger on it just because of like something would happen with life, family, yeah. and work, and everything and else. It is work. And, it is a lot of work. and it is a lot of work. And um, and now I know, uh, I now know that, okay, great. You, I want to do all these things, but you got to prioritize it, right? Just like, where does it fall on the important things? And I, maybe I'm just reaching the point where I really like to code, but now I'm not a, as much as a perfectionist when I was young, because I'm mm -hmm. guessing I'm chasing different skills. Yeah. Not necessarily yeah. that, oh, I don't think they're important. It's just more of that, oh, I want to learn about X. I want to learn how to deal with conflict resolution between people, right? To me, you know, but it's it wasn't like, oh, I started there. It was just a gradual path. And it wasn't a straight path. It was just like really <laughs> wandering around. Right. 
No, it, it is surprising how much in software industry for what it is. It's so much of a people business. It is. It's all about people. Right. Problems. So let me ask you this. Like you, you deal right. with a lot of tech uh, and mm -hmm. you work in the community. Um, what's the most exciting thing for you that makes you go? And what's what are some of your challenges? Uh, I would, you know, I will have to go back to um, just getting people to see how something simple how you can make something simple, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, lately for the past two years, um, uh, a friend of mine, his name is Matt Gray. Um, he's also a uh, East Alliance partner. So I do some work with Alliance. Um, so Michelle Bustamante, uh, Zoyner, um, Tejada. And um, so I got to meet Matt Gray through those, through, through that uh, partner network. And the one thing that I loved about his mantra, which I adopted, so thank you, Matt, <laughs> for, for that, is um, make it work, make it better, make it fast. So based on that sort of mantra is like, I've been spending time with some of my clients of like, oh, we want to go to the, we want to go to the cloud. Cool. What does that look like? What, what does cloud mean to you? Yeah. Right. Is it just another data center that you're going to deploy stuff to? Is, you know, what is like, and well, we have those discussions like, okay, cool. Let's make it work. <laughs> and then we'll figure out how to write, the, you know, if it's manual at first, who cares? It doesn't have to be fully automated from the start. Because right. how do you know what you're going to automate if you don't know what your your target is, right? Right. So and and I've been doing a lot of API development on .NET five. Looking forward to .NET six just because of performance issue and not nice issues, but improvements that you get just out of the box by just upgrading, right? And with the clients, are like, okay, great. Now let's talk about scalability. Let's talk about these other things. So it's not necessarily, you know, of what you you should know. Right, but it's just kind of one of those like, oh, I know Azure, but do I really know Azure? And you know, truth be told, I'm actually getting, I'm going through a uh, another a friend, um, actually a friend of mine from Iowa State, uh, Brian Gorman, who is an MCT. Uh, he's just started a um, a group where we are all study group working to get our Azure certification, because mm -hmm. that's the fun part about you know, I know Azure, but it's not like Tommy Boy, it's not on the box. <laughs> Right. So the certification shows that, yeah, you do know Azure because you took a test that you knew how to answer correctly. Right. And, and nothing against certification. You know and I mean? That it's just yeah. it's just it's it's just an extra thing. And there are a lot of things when I go through the through those uh, classes where I'm like, oh, that's why it works that way. I just never had the time. to. It's like I know it worked, but it wasn't down to the why because I wasn't giving it the time to figure out the why. <laughs> So, you know, I'm just going to, you know, so to me, it's like what excites me, what I'm into right now is like it's literally cloud at a different level, not the solution delivery level, but how it all works. Not then saying I'm going to build my own cloud. No one should do that uh, just because there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of complex problems that you have to solve. And um, it, you know, just figure out how to leverage already existing uh, solutions that are out there. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. So. A few years back, uh, mm -hmm. you have been involved and started uh, this little thing we call .NET Con. <laughs> what is that about? How did you get started? That's, that's a good question. So I always uh, label myself as a co-founder of .NET Conf. And the reason why I say that is that, again, long, quick, long story. Um, so we started in, in 2010. And by we, it was myself and Eric Hexter. Hmm. So Eric Hexter was very involved in the community a couple of years ago. Uh, he did a lot of stuff with MVC, um, MVC Contriv, um, wrote actually MVC in action books and things like that. Eric is a good friend. And um, so him and I had a very common problem that we wanted to go to conferences, but we couldn't because we had a young family. <laughs> so trying to leave for a week to go to tech ed, to go to PDC and like tell my wife, Good luck with a two-year-old mm -hmm. <laughs> wasn't going to fly, right? Yeah. And he was in the same thing. So Eric and I, both being MVPs, were like, hey, we got these resources available to us through MVP program. We have live meeting. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have scars of live meetings <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Um, so we're like, hey, can we create a user group, virtual user group on it? 
Yeah. So we did that. We um, we called it Community for MVC. Mm-hmm. Uh, C for MVC back. And now I'm dating myself when for MVC first started, right? MVC, ASP.NET MVC. So we did that. And um, from there, we're like, what if we just build a conference out of it, which is just a larger user group? Yeah. So then we built MVC Conf. Um, and we partnered with, we had different sponsors. Um, but one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to have a Microsoft track. And um, obviously trying to ask um, Hanselman or Phil Hack, and it's like, hey, by the way, I know everybody's asking you to come talk to their conference, but you should not, you should say no to those and you should say yes to my conference, <laughs> right? It's very difficult. So it's like, all right, well, if you can't move the mountain, let's see, can you get closer to it? Right. Or right. go around it or anything else like that. So what we did is like, all right, well, let's pitch the idea. Can we do this out of channel? I mean, channel nine is doing streaming, you know, it's brand new into it. Can we do this out of channel nine? And we reached out to Microsoft through our channels and the VP program and was like, Hey, can we do this? Like, yeah, that's a great idea. And the best part, none of the Microsoft people have to travel. So it literally just turns into an appointment on their calendar. Yeah. <laughs> which is great right so now you, you were doing internet first before the pandemic hit right, right? yeah exactly yeah. And, and the reason why we did it was because of like okay great well i want to give content out to people i want content and if i want it and this kind of content other people want the same content and we can't create it because and back then it was like oh i gotta go to this regional conference and this other regional conference which don't get me wrong i love regional conferences they're great I, i'm a speaker there and i support them every way shape i can but guess what in a given weekend or a given week there could be two regional conferences going at the same time and then you have the the sort of the rock star schedule we're like which i've done it i'm not a rock star but it was like you land in this thing you go to that conference you get on a plane after you talk and you fly to the other conference so it's, and then by the time you're done, you're tired, you're dead tired. And then you got to go be a husband, wife, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, so that's the problem that we were trying to solve with um, .NET Conf, sorry, with the virtual conferences, NBC Conf. Then we, we grew and we called it ASP Conf. And then we kind of, we were planning on the next one. And um, next one is like the following year. And um, I'm Scott Hunter at the time um, who has just, slowly you know kind of rallying .NET and asp and was like hey we should focus on .NET, you know because you know there was a back in the day um there was the, the sort of turf war between web forms mvc and like unnecessary thing which sadly i sometimes voiced on my opinion on the mvc side right on the web form side and so mea culpa for that uh I was like let's bring it all together and i was like yeah i love it by that point, Eric had gotten busy with work and everything else. Um, so then uh, Hanselman, Hanselman and Scott Hanselman and I were like, all right, well, let's do it together. When can we do it? I don't know. What day are you free? <laughs> so we're literally just looking at the schedule. It's like, oh, we're free on this day. Sweet. How's it going to work? We'll figure it out. <laughs> because we didn't have Channel 9. We didn't have anything. So we were able to put it together first. Um, .NET Conf was Scott in his office and me in my living <laughs> room office um, through Google Hangouts, Hangouts on Air. Mm-hmm. So we would do, we would uh, come up with a Google Hangout and we would talk with you. It's like, hey, we have Sam talking about this. And at the time, SignalR had just come out like very, very early on. And we actually wrote SignalR code because each appointment, each Hangout had a different URL. <laughs> so we actually wrote SignalR code to not maliciously, but inject HTML into the main page to now change. Okay, now here's Sam session and here's you no know, so-and-so session and so-and-so session. We were injecting that HTML real time on it. Um, and then we proved it, minimal viable product, right? It's like, um, and it was funny enough because I remember talking with Scott. It's like, yeah, so I got to drop right around five o'clock my time, which is three Pacific. And it's like, oh, don't worry, me, dude. I, I, I got the afternoon. And it was just kind of like, okay, so he was off until that time. And then he was in and on. So we made it work, right? 
sure and did. then and then we just got bigger and got bigger and now you know i uh, last year we had our our 10 10th year anniversary counting back all the way to mvc conf right. um and now it's it's a huge show you know back you know the first one first official .NET conf was a day long yeah. now it's now it's yeah, three days, three days. Yeah. Well, and plus and also the 24 the, hour thing. Exactly. Plus so I blame Jeff uh, Fritz for that because it was like, so. Jeff was like, we should do it 24 hours. Like, that's crazy, Jeff. <laughs> but I love the idea. Let's see how that works. And now that's we're, yeah. <laughs> it's like our fourth year doing it or something. Yeah. I don't remember. Well, kudos to you <laughs> kind of doing this over the years. And uh, I'll, I'll post a, uh, I'll, I'll highlight the URL again. Lock and yeah. is a big deal because this is what Microsoft now uses to kind of launch big, right. big things. Yeah. So, and and, uh, and honestly, yeah. we made it the .NET conference. So that's you know it was yes. like, but it was like let's try it out before we spend millions and millions of dollars or or tens of dollars <laughs> on budget. Uh, we proved it out, and yeah, it, it has become the the conference for .NET. All things .NET. So, folks, if you're tuned in. Um, Dot and Conf is coming up in two yeah. weeks. Two weeks in November eighth. Uh, well, actually, Visual Studio launch is November eighth, and right. Dot and Conf is nine to the eleventh. So three days right. of all out content. Dot six mm -hmm. comes out. Lots of excitement. Yep. Yeah. And I so still have a lot of code to write for it oh, <laughs> in the okay. background, well, which is. I'm glad awesome. that I've take, taken you away for 45 minutes here. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, all good. Not, not that you're busy. <laughs> Right. Uh, but let me ask you a few more yeah. uh, things here. So you deal with a lot of tech um, mm -hmm. across different stacks. Right. Um, what excites you? What's something that is really cool that you have come across of late? That is a really good question. Honestly, um, this is of recent um, because I'm trying to get rid of I'm trying to get rid of tech like hardware. Um, mm -hmm. Like be, like I was telling you before, it's like behind this green um, screen. There's a hot mess of just old mm -hmm. tech, yeah. original iPads. I have a Zune, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just yeah. my uh, my wife hates it because I'm a pack rat. Mm. So um, I would say the coolest thing that I've been playing with is um, trying to get rid of my MacBook because I love a laptop, but it's just gigantic. Like it's sitting right here, and I have a Mac Mini and I have a Mac Pro on the server room behind me and whatever else, but. Um, the coolest tech I've actually been playing with has been GitHub um, Code Spaces, uh, and just recently yeah. VS mm -hmm. uh, uh, Visual Studio Code on the web. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what, what's the your VS Dev? Uh, v, I uh, think it's VS Code that Dev. I don't remember. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. VS Code that Dev. It, so yeah. And the, and the reason why I love it is because like I always wanted to you code. Don't need anything like you from my saying, like from my iPad. You are just on your iPad. You can just pick right. it up. Yeah. And it's funny because you know kind of to link .NET Conf one time, I was flying out to Seattle to go, because another cool part about .NET Conf is like only a handful of people travel for it. So right. we go there and thousands and thousands of developers benefit from it. So right. instead of in, in the flip the model out, right? So instead of worrying about hotels and transportation and everything else, like really, you know, you can watch it, you know, yeah. wearing shorts or sweatpants or whatever, <laughs> you can yeah, enjoy it. You know, we, we talk about this a lot. Like, uh, there is a lot of value in in-person things, like right. the network. There is a huge lot of value learning from each other. But at the same time, like um, being like developer advocates, like we are constantly guilty of like the carbon footprint, like right. what this constant travel does. And right. yes, not everything is up to us to solve. But slowly, things are starting to be carbon right. neutral, like you know, bio sustainable fuels and all other stuff. But right. if you could get away by having so much of a huge reach with just mm -hmm. like 10 people in a studio that is amazing right well and the thing about it too is not only that is that over the years we've gotten better right mm -hmm. because essentially it's an iterative process so it's like and then we added the focus event so we have one every three months which was an idea that i pitched many years ago and i was like hey let's do it let's just focus on one thing and then beth massey took it it's like what about these other things and we we spread well but the, the the funny thing about you talking about you know the carbon footprint and everything else is like, yeah, it is. It, it takes a lot of effort to move molecules, yeah. right? So by doing that less, and, and specifically with uh, physical conferences, and I'm not saying that they're again they're bad or anything else. They solve different problems. For me, a physical mm -hmm. conference, and 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 I've tell you, I've grown over the years. Before I I was like virtual conferences all the way because look, yeah, I built this, right? But I've grown older and wiser, I guess. Um, and 
you're right. It, they tackle different things. Physical conferences are there for the human to human interaction. And they optimize for that. Virtual conferences optimize for content. Right. So you can develop the content and now you got the long tail. So if you only get 10,000 people, 15,000 people, which it's pretty large amount of people, right? Yep. Uh, and those are actually streams, right? Not necessarily people. Um, so I'll talk about that in here in a second, but that content goes for a year, yeah, nine yep. months, whatever. And it just, it's sort of like an investment. Like you put something yep. money in the bank, interest because they're going and it gets higher. So it's a totally different approach on it. Um, yep. Okay, so behind that green screen of yours, you got a lot of gadgets. What's your favorite one right now? My favorite one right now, it is literally uh, a $45, uh, um, what's it called? The Mario little handheld thing. <laughs> it's a Super <laughs> Mario Brothers. I forgot what it's called. Um, and it's like literally Super Mario Brothers in your hand, which mm. like as a little kid, I always wanted to like, it would be awesome if I can just take my Nintendo everywhere. And I yeah. sometimes did, and my parents hated it. Like we'd go on a trip and like, there's a box with my freaking Nintendo because I wanted to go play Nintendo. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's like Mario right here. And the best yeah. part, I can pause it and shut it off. And it's like USB-C. We're like, why does it need to be USB-C for, for charging? <laughs> but it is. And literally I have iPads, I have multiple laptops back there. I have a 3D printer. <laughs> uh and yeah, i get to play, favorite thing, huh? and, and i get to play with all those things with my kids like my right. kids like let's 3d print this thing i'm like cool let's do it but it's like just that little thing and the reason why i like it so much is because of like sometimes during lunch i'm like because i eat at my desk not because i want to it's just convenient and whatnot I'm, i sit there and i'm just trying to get past world four four all right cool i got to five two awesome pause <laughs> Got to go work now. And it's just sort of like a, to me, is, is the joy that it brings rather than like, oh, look how expensive this thing is. Like, it was 45 bucks, right? But it's yeah. just like, I don't think about anything else because okay. I have a monitor here, I have a monitor here, I have a monitor here. And similar to you, right? I got a laptop here, I got three keyboards, I got everywhere. It's like, it's just a bunch of white noise now, yeah. right? Uh, but this is just that little thing is just focusing on it. Yeah, yeah, well said. All right, so you are a busy man, uh, you know, with a lot going mm -hmm. on. But uh, what do you do outside of work? Like, how does Javier relax? What is your social life look like? Um, kids, believe it or not. Kids. Yeah, kids. My my oldest, my fifteen year old, and my ten year old play soccer. Nice. So um, I get I love going watching them um, play. Uh, my twelve year old said he just finished football. He's in also in a rock band. There's this program called School of Rock, which is sort of like mm -hmm. a franchise, like mm -hmm. the movie. Actually, the, the movie came because of the French. It was it's interesting. If you go go Wikipedia, you you learn all about it. I did. That's why I'm just <laughs> suggesting that. And my ten year old plays drums in that same band. So nice. uh, I try to completely disconnect, and I say try because sometimes I fail miserably at it. That I get this the glare from my wife. <laughs> it's like. Could you put your phone down for a second? It's like, yes, I am sorry. Something blew up. And it's like, something always blows up. It's like, I know. <laughs> um, but that's what I really try to do. I try to um, just disconnect. And it's it's difficult. And um, my wife and I took a trip to Colorado a couple of weeks ago. And literally, I was like, app, 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 no notifications, no notifications, no notifications, no notifications. And I told uh, some of my clients, like, hey, I'm taking time off. If it's on fire, text me. Mm -hmm. I won't have my laptop. I just have my iPad and I can RDP into something or whatever else. Um, but that's, you know, I need that. And yeah. I'm not sure how many of you out there need yeah. that as well. And it's okay to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you come back fresh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about food? <clears throat> do you have a favorite cuisine? Do you, do you live to eat or do you eat to live? I eat to live many okay. many years ago i lived to eat uh which is why i try to work out uh i'm very biased and uh mexican food i mean it's still and, and, and not because it's like oh my god it's the best food ever you know it it's obviously i grew up eating it and that's a little different but that's the whole reason um why i love it um remember, remember the movie ratatouille 
uh, yes. from Pixar. Mm -hmm. So there's a very powerful scene that sort of made me cry a little bit. Yeah, I cry at Pixar movies. I'm that guy. Uh, where um, uh, I forgot the name, uh, Ego, mm -hmm. uh, the, the food critic. He is tasting like ratatouille. So he takes a, a spoonful of it and puts it in his mouth. And he gets transported back to his childhood. With something bad was happening uh, or something happened to him. His mom was there and he ate a bowl of ratatouille. And it was like an all was right with the world. Right. So to me, that's why I love Mexican food because it reminds me of when we used to sit down as a family with my parents and my brother and just have dinner. Uh, funny enough, um, like some of my friends who um, who I've who here or in uh, or even in the speaking circus circuit, excuse me, because sometimes is it is a circus, <laughs> as, you, as you know. Um, when we go out, it's like, hey, let's go to a Mexican restaurant, and we go to a Mexican restaurant, and I always order uh, huevos rancheros, mm -hmm. which essentially just eggs with a ranchero sauce, and I use air quotes because it means different things in different restaurants, with rice, beans, and corn tortillas. And they're like, why do you, you know, why do you eat it? And it's like, for two reasons. A, if some, if it's, you know, you know if someone messed up an egg, period, <laughs> right? It's pretty black and white. Uh, but more importantly is because of when, whenever we were busy as a family and like my, dad working late, my mom going to work because both of my parents work. And it was like, they only saw each other for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, that's what the life of Im immigrants, I guess. Um, we, you know, mom would say, it's like, oh, I made some eggs because it was quick and easy. And what did we have with it? Rice and beans. Okay. So I just, to me, it's, that's just kind of, it just centers me. Right. Okay. So, and, um, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's why I, I do that. It's just kind of more of like everything else. Again, things could yeah. be happening here and there. We're always going to be busy. Yeah. But just kind of going back to that point and just sort of rethinking what's, you know, helping me re reconnect to what's important yeah, is absolutely. what I love. That's your, that's your comfort. That's your right. Exactly. All right. Trick question here, maybe. All right. Um, if you had a million dollars right now, right. what would you do? If I had a million dollars, kind of like the song, um, <laughs> So funny enough, what I would do is I would uh, stop working mm -hmm. and um, focus more on volunteering. So um, I, there's a lot of stuff out there that needs attention, in particular with you know, um, with and my my kids go to private schools. So um, not private school, like we go to um, uh, Catholic schools. So there's a lot of work that especially Catholic schools and organizations that we don't have the funding and everything else to kind of volunteer to, which I have in the past of like, Hey, let's go run cable because it's going to cost us thousands of dollars to run cable to the new STEM lab that we built. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's do these things. So I will do that and I will take some of the money and um, invest it into uh, in, or provide or donate it to those sort of causes that help not necessarily just Catholic schools or, or just private schools in general like that, but it's just anything. It's like, oh, here's a problem. Here's this. And I will try to invest some of it as well to get more money so then I can invest it into other things. So um, I think that's the, there, there needs to be more of that. And, and by no means am I a crusader to like, if you're not doing this, this is not right. I, I I, I, again, it's paying it forward. This goes back to, back to the story of college. Someone helped me out and it affected me and it has helped me pay out dividends over the years, many, many dividends. So if I could do that for others and kind of help it push it forward, um, I would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny because the, the, the question is like, what could you, you know, if you were to have a, if you were to find a genie in a bottle and ask a wish, it's a similar thing. And it's like, what would you ask for? It's like, well, I will actually, I asked for a billion dollars <laughs> uh, because now I can actually do more things to invest it. And, and, and I was like, I would, but there's a caveat. Every time I invest something into like, uh, what, you know, clean water in Africa, cool. Here's like $10 million. Let's go figure out the problem, right? Then I will get two times back, back in my bank. So then I can go invest that somewhere else. So it's 
it's it's a weird thing to look at it's like you know but now my million dollars is really my time because now i'm no longer attending a soccer field i'm volunteering telling people where to go to the soccer fields <laughs> right okay. and and that's one of those as you know it's one of the resources one of the things we can't get more of yeah absolutely so, well but, yeah. said and that, that's very noble of you actually that's very nice all right so here you are uh, mm -hmm. after years and years of doing software, um, a stalwart in our industry. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us have learned a lot of things from you. Uh, what is how we are looking forward to in the next maybe six months, one year? A little time off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm uh, actually uh, what I'm look, really looking forward to is, is seeing where. Um, so I'm going to pick on .NET for a little bit for a second in, in a good way. Is that we've seen leaps and bounds. Like I think the cadence was a bit too crazy early on for people, um, and it was actually even to the point where like, oh, now we have you know .NET Core one, uh, one oh, one one, and and now we two, two one, two two, um, and I think it was just because it was hardening, right? Trying to figure out what that what's going to be there. Uh, for me, it is all of the things that the technology enables, right? Because now we have a solid foundation. Yeah, it's .NET right. 7. It's like, well, we should have it by then. It's like, not really, because, you know, .NET Core was a rewrite of .NET, period. <laughs> um, um, because of the way just what enabled, right? And so I'm looking forward to, okay, great. From my perspective, you know, I view .NET 7 as where we were with .NET 2.2, .NET 3.5. Mm -hmm. So you're standing on a stable base and you have a right. fixed cadence of... Uh, right, exactly. We have a fixed cadence of what's coming up. There's a lot more... Um, the cadence is a lot faster, way faster, right? There's RCs that you can try and everything else. And now really, you know, um, up here, you're talking about I have a stack of Raspberry Pis mm -hmm. that I'm working... Uh, that I started working with and I, hey, shiny object, um, on creating a Kubernetes cluster running... <laughs> On Raspberry Pis, and the fact that I can take that net code that I built on my Mac and deploy it and run some Raspberry Pi inside Kubernetes, I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the thing that excites me. It's like right now we're just kind of scratching the surface, right? Let's look at WebAssembly, right, with uh, Maui and or Blazor or anything else we're doing. It's like, what? What are we doing on the browser? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this is the guy who used to write applets. <laughs> right and needed a plugin it was finicky doesn't work in this browser this way and doesn't work in that browser because the plugins even though it's the same they're different mm -hmm. um now it's just kind of more of the standard so it's like i'm really excited of what's what's going to happen next visual studio code on the browser I'm like that's a full id granted there's been other ides and, and other editors that have done the same thing but the extensions we're able to do this and like wow that is crazy, yeah. and uh, um, you're going to be drinking from the fire hose just as you, as you are going to be doing it. But the the times that we have ahead are going to be pretty crazy, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to all the people learning on that as, as along with me, as we figure out what the what the quote unquote future looks like. Yeah, well said. <laughs> Absolutely nothing else to top it off. Well said, well said. Well, um, Javier, you're a busy man. Uh, you have uh, another edition of .NET Conf uh, coming up right. in two weeks uh, with all of the folks at Microsoft and the mm -hmm. community. It's a three-day right. huge thing, so tune in, folks. Um, right. Thank you for you know taking an hour of your busy life to kind of come and hang out with me. I just wanted to know more about you. And uh, uh, I mean, you are awesome, so just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. You're awesome, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And yeah, chat room, thank you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Cool. And yeah. enjoy your Friday. And you know, that's that's the thing. And you'll go outside, take a walk, or mm -hmm. go play that Xbox game you, you bought three yeah. months ago and you haven't played it, or whatever that is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do your thing. All right, folks, that's it from us for this chat show. We'll see you next Friday right here uh, for the next chat show. And we'll code uh, all through the week. But uh, like Javier said, uh, take it easy over the weekend. And we'll see you soon. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.